Hello and welcome to another Corel Aftershot Pro tutorial. This was a request by someone on the channel asking about sharpening and understanding the sharpening tool, a couple of its options and ways to apply it can really improve the uh, overall result that you get. Now the, the couple things I will mention and maybe this is my computer and it might be my monitor. I don't have high-end high-def monitors. I've got I think what I would consider to be pretty bog standard, so your results uh, may vary. I find that images as they display in the uh, window here in the editor don't look as good as they do when I export them. When I hit export, save the image off somewhere, and then if I open it again and view it, I find that the image tends to look pretty darn good versus what I was looking at in the editor. Now that said, the um, using the sharpening tool in certain ways, again, it can make a big difference if you do it the right way or wrong way. So let's take a look at a few different images and I'll give you my thoughts on when it's good to use it, when it may be bad to use it, and the different techniques of using it. So here's, here's an example of your sort of standard woodland shot with lots of trees and lots of detail. We have all these little intricate leaves and little branches and this was shot, you know, telephoto from across a field and it's just kind of a, uh, you know, basic image, a row of trees not specific about a, a detail. We'll be looking at some more detailed shots here in just a moment. So if I go to the uh, panel, so if I'm in the standard panel, I have to go to my sharpening. And so for me, I've got the uh, Wavelet Sharpen here, and it's on my plugins too. I, depending on what you have installed, it may be in a different spot, so just be aware of that. And there are a number of options here, and I'm not going to go through all of them. I'm not an expert on all of them. I've essentially found what works for me and I kind of stick with it. I'm pretty simple that way. I suppose I could spend more time with 12 different things trying to figure out all of the best combinations and I encourage you to do that and if you found a combination that you think works better for a situation that I'm discussing please leave me a comment below because I, I love to learn new stuff. So my woodland shot, if I just go sharpen and choose the wavelet one you can see <laughs> that's pretty different looking isn't it? So if I go all the way back out here you can see it here there it's activated and there it's deactivated. So it's essentially applying whatever little contrast adjustment to as much of it as possible. And again, remember, my monitor and the editor working together are trying to show me the results. So as I scroll in, you'll notice it, see how it changed there? So if I click this off and back on here, see how it kind of flickered? And that's just part of how the computer's trying to keep up with whatever it's displaying. So keep that in mind as well. But in this case, we've got a million details and all of them are being slightly adjusted because I have my uh, sharpening set really high and I'm just choosing my basic. So depending on where, you know, if you've never used this tool before, it might be just set at 50. I think that's the default. Depending on what you're doing, you can change the amount. So I'm going to lower this down, let's say, to 13 and it looks far less crazy, right? If, if 50, let's say, that's, that's the default, I'll just do this. And so if I go off and then back on, you can see that it makes an adjustment, but it's not quite so insane. So a high amount is going to give you a quite a bit different look than a low amount will. So that's one of the key things. And again, I, I encourage you to play with all of the adjustments to see which result gives you the best, uh, which adjustment gives you the best result based on the situation of the image you're working on. So there is one other thing that I typically do, though not always, and that's this clarity mode. And it works a little bit better in some circumstances than others. So if I click that, you can see that it made it just a very slight. So I'm going to try that again for you. So this is off, no, no clarity mode, it's just the wavelet. I'm going to put this on. It's a little hard to tell, but it's there, it's subtle. So here it is, the full size with clarity mode on and the clarity mode off. Unfortunately, like I said, things, the computer's doing its work, so it's flickering as it's trying to deal with it. So again, this in this circumstance, it's applying edits to every little leaf, every little branch, tree trunks. You know, in this case, obviously the grass, although that's harder to tell because it's already um, very light in color. So whether or not you think that's good, I would recommend trying some adjustments. Do an export to, you know, a JPEG or whatever, high res, and take a look at it and see, hey, this is perfect, it's what I want or no, it's, I don't, you know, you can always, it's digital, you just delete it if you don't like it. So that's, that's one way, it's the, what I call global. So just hit, you know, have your image, come and hit sharpen, 
right? And say, hey, perfect. I like it. And you're done, right? Change it to clarity mode. I like it less. I like it more. Whatever. Change the amount. I like it less. I like it more. Whatever. So that's your, that's your bog standard basic. Now, I typically don't do sharpening on an entire scene. And especially with woodland stuff. Because with uh, a tree situation, you don't necessarily, and this is an artistic call, you don't necessarily want your leaves and your branches and the subtleties to be sharp and being distracting. You want your trunks to be sharp because that's where there's some specific detail. But oftentimes things like leaves in the background, in this case back in here, you kind of want them to be a little bit more subtle and, and increase the depth. You've got sharp in the foreground with the trunks and then it goes subtle as things get a little bit more uh, watercolor looking, you know, whatever, you know, whatever metaphor technique or you, know, you want to refer to. Uh, so for me, I've, I've found that I don't like to do sharpening in woodlands globally. Now let me show you this technique. I'm going to use a different image because it's just a little more obvious and easy to, um, to see it. So let's go here. So in this case, it, again, I can just do global and I can uh, crank this up or, or, or down. Uh, let me go here. And you can see that the, tr the trunks, this bark, kind of gets a detailed look. But you can also see, see all this noise that's, that's cropping in here? And in this case, again, it's a misty scene. And uh, it's trying to sharpen every little detail. And so it's grabbing some of the mist. And it's, it, again, it may or may not be what you want. Just keep it that, keep it that simple. So even with clarity mode, again, you may decide I like it or I don't like it. But again, in a foggy scene like this, if what you want is for this fog to be this subtle softening effect, but you really want your trunks to be kind of sharp, what you can do, and this is my preferred method, is to actually do an adjustment layer. And so what I'll do here is I'll just use the brush to keep it simple. You can obviously get real technical with your drawing with your different options, but I'll just keep it simple. So I'm going to click on here and I'm doing a scroll ball, uh, scroll wheel to make this bigger. You can obviously just drag, make those larger there, type in the value you want. So I'm going to also do this at, this is intensity of 50. The nice thing about this is the adjustment works just like everything else. If you've seen my other tutorials, we talk about the layers. You can actually change the intensity. So that's kind of cool. So what I'm going to do is that one and this one, again, just we'll keep it quick and dirty here and I won't get too um, too worried about like I would if I was doing an actual image. So what I've done here as you can see and uh, let's show that. You can um, see I've just painted a couple trunks with this brush. Right? Follow me? And then what I'm going to do is now I'm going to enable the sharpening. Now you'll notice here that this doesn't jump. So it, it just when I do it based on the layer and an adjustment layer it starts at zero. So what I just can do is drag this over. I'm going to go kind of extreme so we can see it, make it obvious. And I'm going to choose clarity mode. And then I'm going to back this out and then play with it. So you can see here, and again, I, I wasn't real careful, so forgive that piece of it. The actual branches in between where the fog is, the misty stuff, is still soft. So I'll go off. So that's kind of the global look. And on. And you'll notice that I'm just getting a little more detail in the trunks, in the bark. So right in here. And again, I went pretty extreme here. I find when I do uh, local adjustments such as this, I tend to apply more sharpening than I do if I ever do global. If, if I ever did this, I'll, I'll do one more image here that I show. I'll just do a global change on some trucks that I photographed on the side of the road. And uh, so this here, I've already got it like 100. It's not uncommon for me to do that. But when I do the global, I tend to go between 25 and 50. And again, that's just what I found that has been um, to my taste. And so we've got good sharpening here, no sharpening here, and you know away you go. So just like the other, you can, in fact, play with your opacity, and that affects it. And when you're doing a brush, you can change the intensity. So keep that in mind that this, the same rules apply on the um, adjustment layers as other things, if you were doing local contrast adjustment or local saturation adjustment or whatever. Sorry, I'm getting back into my layers tutorial. So let's look at these trucks. So side of the road, a couple of trucks, kind of a neat old scene. I love, I love old crap like this. Uh, I think a lot of photographers do. And uh, overall, actually, the scene by itself actually works pretty well. I don't, I don't need these to be sharp. It's 
derelict old vehicles, you know, the way I've got it kind of, um, I, I threw a preset on here that I use for this sort of thing to kind of get a feel for it. And it kind of looks vintage -y, kind of looks old, kind of looks forgotten and all the, all the, meta, all the uh, adjectives. But let's, let's play with some adjustments here. So I'm going to hit global and you'll notice that, again, all of these little subtleties up here get affected as well. So that's, that's your key thing there. But, uh, you know, you have to decide if that's going to work for you or not. The other, again, is just to play with, in this case, I'm going to show you the clarity mode a little bit, a little better, I think. So I'm going to hit the wavelet here, and then I'm going to look in these little subtle areas in the dark. You can see the clarity mode. See this here? See how you get a little bit more and then kind of goes away? So you can play with that. You'll notice that, it, again, the computer's kind of uh, playing adjustment games. And so find out what's going to work. Play with clarity mode. Play with your intensity. And then you can, again, you can play with things like the radius and stuff, too, to get a feel for the adjustments. Now, my final piece of advice is going to be that you don't apply sharpening until the very end. It's a bit like vignetting. Uh, do all of your adjustments. Make sure that you've cropped the image. You know, in this case, maybe I want to do a 16 by 9 because I really don't need the rest of it. I just want these trucks in there. So maybe I'm going to crop the bejeebles out of it here and, uh, you know, whatever. And then, and then play with your sharpening and decide, do I like this in the leaves and in the bushes in the foreground? Or do I want to have it, you know, just in a certain area? So maybe I go to an adjustment layer and I'm going to just do this because I want the front of that truck sharp but the rest of it I don't really care about right and so here's another little side trick if you click the, the clarity mode it automatically selects it so that's kind of just a little handy thing and then you can drag this up and uh, call it a day so anyway I hope that that some of that is helpful in in one way or the other local adjustments are always better in my opinion than global and uh, don't apply them until you're done with everything because it's real easy to have um, those kinds of adjustments be distracting when you're trying to decide whether or not other things about the image are good or bad. You start playing with the final details of vignetting and sharpening too early and suddenly that's, that's gotten you off track when you really need to be deciding, is this even a good image? Do I like this crop? Do I want to play with the overall uh, color balance or you know whatever the different adjustments you might be doing? So. Anyway, uh, hopefully that works and you uh, found something of value there. Leave me a comment below. And again, if you've got a certain settings, whether it's the one, the wavelet one, two, uh, these, these different um, options that are in here that, again, I've only played with them briefly. I've just found that clarity mode and this seems to be good enough for me, but I know there's lots of options here. Uh, you know, salt and pepper removal, right? That's pretty handy for some things. So let me know if you found one that works really good for a certain situation. Because, again, I love to learn stuff. And if it's uh, specific enough and a and, uh, situation that other people might use, maybe I'll do another video of just that, and then we can share the knowledge. So that would be great. Anyway, that's all I've got. Talk to you later.